Welcome, everybody, to another Voice of Nick show. We're doing more of our post America illustrations. And uh, we're, we have everything on the right side done. Um, now we want to sort of move on to this larger section on the left. And uh, after that, we would get the final bit of border in. Otherwise, everything's really good to go. So first, let's take our bag of tricks. We're going to move this here and turn it on. And we have this pre-made to fit on this side. And it'll fit be the exact same size as that one, which we may not necessarily want. See, because this uh, lives a little bit differently. So what we also need to account for is the little bit of ceiling above it. And then after that, the question is, do we want to extend this or shorten that? An interesting question. So maybe It's such a small distance, we can't really fit anything else in there. Okay, so this would go right up to the edge, sort of. Let's get rid of the extraneous things. First, we'll, uh, we won't merge it, actually. We're going to keep it for now. Actually, do want that. Okay. Now let's move this. See, this is where it gets a little bit more mathematical for us, where we have to actually figure out, you know, particular issues with the geometry of what we've already drawn. And it's a good thing we didn't uh, merge it, because now we can easily adjust... Good. Um, okay, so I think the, the thing to do is going to be that we want to... This plane has to exist underneath the horse's head. That's like number one priority, because obviously it doesn't... We don't want it to intersect. First, what is this? Oh, this is our thing full of bags of tricks. We'll leave that off. I'm going to turn this on. We're going to make a big straight line, hopefully straight. See, this is not making a mark. Good. So this is what we got. It has to be here or lower. Let's say here. And we'll make other straight lines to, oops. Keeps wanting to grab this instead of move this. Okay, we can like flip it 180 too so it doesn't look identical. And we'll 
take these two. Well, first of all, I guess we'll merge them. And then we will duplicate this and put it down here. And that'll be this. Uh, and we'll also flip this 180. Which didn't do anything. Oh, because, because right, right, right. So we'll have to custom change that so that these don't both look identical. Um, so now this is slightly different in size than this. And I think it's just gonna be a matter of changing the spacing. I don't think we wanna do anything. Line. Okay, let's get this line off of this layer. Now we'll put these, and we just want to split the vertical difference here. So we'll take this, we'll take this, and we'll take this. Easy. It doesn't really read as being that different between them, but it allows us to do what we want to do. Great. So we can take the triangles thing and put it here pretty easily. Um, but first let's, so we have this good to go. Now let's do these. Um, we're going to merge these since so just one layer. Let's actually not that. We're going to delete stuff here. And we're going to take whatever else is there away. And we'll just make a few changes so that it doesn't feel like they're identical lines. Like conspicuously thick sections, or you can see that the curve goes exactly the same in these two spots. So all we gotta do is, um, we're actually gonna change both because I don't like the curve in general. But since we're now doing these custom, it won't read as being like, oh, this is just duplicated. Great. Okay. For this, let's um, we're gonna take this maybe out of here and put it above because this is now the scaffolding. Right. OK. 
Okay, so since we did all the work already, um, this is mostly going to be a job of integrating the patterns we've already created into our new section. Let's just flip this. Uh, you can't flip it like that. You have to drag it. good. Then we will do this pattern, which I think could stand to be a little bit less uh, thick. So it's good the way we have it. Let's um, duplicate these though, or rather merge these. We'll put them up here. I think we can merge this into here. We're going to keep this as its own thing for now, um, and we'll start merging stuff as it's finished. It's almost like working with a marker where sometimes it'll be like kind of uh, ragged with the lines that come out, and then if you sort of just screw around with like press it and like jiggle it around then it'll for whatever reason start putting out a very clean line again uh, and that's what it's like with this either this brush or with this software in general I, I'm not sure which okay so we have that good Let's take this design, which we've also already done the work on. Actually, we could take the whole section here. Oh, I deleted it. My selection. And this is then going to dictate how large the other thing has to be. So first of all, let's delete the extraneous sections. And as you can see, because we worked so hard on really getting it right first, now it's just a matter of like we've created the designs already and we're just integrating them into another part of the image. It's not nearly as much um, sort of like calculating meticulous work the second time because we prepared uh, properly the first time. Okay, yeah, I wanted actually to keep this
good. Now all we gotta do is repeat the pattern to the bottom. At this point, we'll merge these and start working on integrating them together. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, it looks great. Okay. We will now integrate this into here. And so this design is sort of similar to this. We're gonna come up with a means of getting this design in here it's got to be thinner it's basically the same snake pattern but it goes isn't it yeah it's the same snake pattern as this on the top bar except you know it's larger and it goes vertically instead of horizontally so we're going to make a guide layer for ourselves It's not really going to follow what's in our um, red layer at all, but we'll keep it there just to see it. Okay, so if this is the center, So we need to break this basically into one, two, three sections with two smaller sections between. And they would ideally be equally spaced. So it's not quite that. Well, here's the way to do that. We would break this then into more sections here. R right. How does that help us though? No, it doesn't help us. It would work if, um, no, it, that, that's correct. So we would basically want That's right, okay. So we're not really paying attention to the red underneath. What we do want to do is ensure that we uh, have a proper grid. So now it's sort of the same thing where we would try to figure out where the halfway point is. If we use the bounding box, we can tell it's like right above this line. 
And the halfway point should be First of all, this would not touch the bottom necessarily, so we'll put this here, and we'll put this here. Maybe it should be the same thickness as the girders. So let's make it like essentially squares. This pattern only occurs, I think, Oh, it does occur again. It happens there and there, so we'll get some use out of it. Although we might have to draw it differently because those are thinner. We'll see how it goes. So now we want this to be square, these boxes. So what we would do we'd use this middle line as a guide. That's correct. Now, all we got to do is then match the distance here so that these are squares. And this probably looks very confusing because it doesn't look like we're really making what I'm trying to make, and we're not. Because the point is, these will then be used um, to accomplish the picture in a much more organized way. Okay, so now all we have to do is the same thing where we had squares, squares, for these, squares for these, great. Now we got to get rid of this guide layer because it's really going to screw us up. And We'll turn this down. And we will use the thing here to Yeah, so we we have to basically see the code in the matrix now and what we're going to do is just use a little color to uh the color in the parts that we actually want. So just to really quick check what I had here. It came down from the top here. It comes down from the top on the top right to the bottom on the bottom left. So we just want it like this. Then it goes left. Then it goes up. Then it goes left. Great. So that's the design. Now we just draw it. Good.
now that we've done all this work to make it, you know, geometrically sound, this should look like a very organized shape. Let's see if it worked. Great, okay. So now we can just fine tune it a little bit. Yeah, it's exactly what we wanted. So now, um, I guess we'll put these in our bag of tricks for later. Um, we should also put a duplicate of this oops, into the bag of tricks. the line weight on these, or the uh, line density rather. I guess the line weight too. Great. Now we gotta do is erase the negative space and this stripe pattern perfectly is achieved. We don't have to do it like all along the shape, which is really annoying to have to do. Of course, the Greeks had to do that, you know, in 500 BC when they were making these, or even longer ago when they were making this type of art. But uh, we, luckily are able to get past that. So, okay, that shape fits in really well now. Um, for this, we can do the same thing. First of all, let's uh, put this into our bag of tricks here. We're gonna turn this off and just combine it with this set of layers so that if we ever wanted to make that shape again, we can just instantly have a copy of that shape. Good, now let's merge this into the top part. Good. And now, let's see what we, uh, what we 
we got? Where's our red layer? Okay, so we have the guys entering the horse. Oh, I'd like to add this little guy before we, before we do everything else. Welcome Soul X93 to the show. Try to drop your raid, but it's not working for me at the moment. Oh yeah, the uh, I've I've disabled all raids, um, incoming raids for the channel. Thanks for the uh, I appreciate the sentiment though, and I hope you had a good day. What are you up to lately, Soul X93? What are you playing? There we go. Get that little scaffolding, and now we will. Add our guy. Add a piece of uh, girder to there. to the wall here. Put a little spine section in. And I figure maybe these little dots sometimes either represent dust kicking up or they represent like sweat of somebody's hard work. It's just a motif that shows up a lot in this type of geometric Greek art. But I figure that I'm gonna add my own little kind of um, logic to it so because you kind of have to do that when you're making a piece of art in order to it's sort of like when you're drawing a person it helps to know um human anatomy because it lets you make informed decisions about you know what to what to make it's the same thing with like when you're coming up with a picture in general you sort of want to um you want to uh, come up with like an internal logic for the picture because it'll allow you to make interesting decisions for how things show up. And a picture is always more sort of like compelling overall if you do have those t sorts of like logical decisions. Okay, now this whole section is one piece except for this thing, which we want. Now we're gonna take this. I guess we should match the height. So instead of what we just did, we'll, we'll copy the entire section. Oops, whoa, don't wanna do that. We can't duplicate it because it'll duplicate the layer, not the selection. So we have to paste, copy paste it. And now, this is why we left this on its own thing, because we don't actually want this second piece anymore. Or we do, but we're gonna move it. So let's take this and put it somewhere else. We're gonna put this over here. 
And let's just make some really quick fixes so that the selection works. All right. Great. Now we're going to fit this in and then we will, what's going on? And then we will worry about the rest. Okay, you can see it's slightly a different tilt to this side than the other, which is fine. Also, the girder looks to be a little bit thicker. So what we can do is twofold. We're essentially using this line as a, that line's not gonna live there anymore, but we're gonna keep it for now as a reference. Good. It's not letting me. That snaps, and then this doesn't snap. Interesting. Well, we'll do something else then. Okay, so first we're gonna take all these layers and put them in a folder. Then we're gonna slightly uh, tilt this. Good. <sighs> Welcome Jen Jen to the show. How you doing Jen Jen? Saying that's so cool. What's up bruv to the show? Thank you for the Twitch playbook. Oh, well I'm glad you like it. Anybody who doesn't know what was up, Rob's talking about the Twitch playbook is a free weekly podcast that I've been creating to help you guys with your Twitch channels. It's on iTunes, Spotify, all the major podcast platforms. <clears throat> oh, so I was playing New World. Nice. I haven't uh, seen that one at all. I know of it, but uh, I don't even know. Any is it good? Like what? I guess it's like a down, top down, sort of dungeon crawling. MMO? I don't really know anything about it. I'm still streaming, uh, are you streaming story games often? Yes. Um, that's still the, the specialty. Right now we're focusing on this, which is the uh, illustrations for a new book that I'm publishing. And uh, it's been going pretty well. Sort of hunkering down and just uh, switching to this until it's done. Okay, so now we want to erase out all the girders here, and then we can, we're necessar not necessarily going to use this, because it's all duplicated and Frankenstein together, but what we're going to do is uh, use it as a reference for then drawing it ourselves. So let's take, do we need, oh yeah, 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 okay. So 
So let's turn off this old layer. And you can see now how ugly looking everything, all the lines are. So we're gonna take that, take that, make the girder edges here, make this. I don't know what that is, some kind of weird glitch. Let's save it if it's screwing up. Uh, what's up, Rosling? Did you draw this? Yeah, so the, um, these uh, chapter illustrations are all for a project that I'm doing of like a ancient Greek story. Uh, I'm publishing my own illustrated edition of an ancient Greek story. And every chapter has like a different style of Greek, uh, ancient Greek art. So that's going to be on Amazon. The pre-orders page is not up yet, so there's no way, way to see it. Uh, and it's also going to be an audio book, which I'm in the process of um, producing now that we've also done live on stream. Uh, and that'll be on Audible. And if anybody wants any more details, you can visit my narrator page on Audible and see all my other... Oops, that's the hype command. Uh, you'll see all the other books that I've published through Audible already if, if anyone's interested in that stuff. But it's been a fun project so far. I'm pretty passionate about this uh, particular story, as, as evidenced by the fact that I've been putting hundreds of hours into uh, <laughs> publishing this this book. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it's definitely a labor of love. I've, I've been enjoying it a lot. This story is slightly less ancient than, uh, it essentially is a direct sequel to the Iliad about the Trojan War and a direct prequel to the Odyssey, which is about Odysseus leaving the Trojan War. Uh, but while those ones were written in 800 BC by, um, you know, obviously by Homer, the post-Homerica, which is the one we're doing, was written in 400 AD. So it's over a thousand years later this one was written but obviously it's still pretty damn old it's you know 1600 years old i don't know if that counts as ancient or not I, i'm pretty sure it still does but we're doing the art as if it was all done by people in you know the height of greek um pottery making which was like roughly i don't know 700 bc to 300 BC or something. Okay, now we gotta get rid of this guide. Good. Yeah, that looks good. So we're gonna remove all the parts where it uh, intersects with stuff later. But for now, we'll do this. This one's too thin, it looks like. Let's let's fix that line. So now this is closer to being equal. Good. Okay. 
Now we just have the job of literally tracing our hack together, you know, many times duplicated thing and making it the fact that we're then, instead of trying to like photo bash our drawing together, you know, all these like disparate elements into one thing, we're instead just photo bashing it badly and then drawing it on top again. Um, because it's such a simple element, it's easier to just do that and have it look cohesive than, you know, photo bash it and spend all this time trying to make it look realistic. For anybody who's not familiar with the term photo bashing, it's a thing that's done a lot in, um, especially in modern art where you have the, you know, Photoshop at your disposal. Um, but essentially like if you're making, let's say somebody's making a concept design for Lord of the Rings or something, it's actually not, a lot of people would consider this cheating if they don't practice modern art, but, uh, it, you know, contemporary or art in the modern era, I should say, not modern art in the sense of like, you know, Jackson Pollock, but, uh, people who are not familiar with contemporary art making process might consider this cheating, but like somebody who's doing a concept art for the Lord of the Rings might actually literally take a picture of a photograph of a sky and like sort of smooth around the edges of it. And then ultimately it becomes a new song and you're not getting sued because you used X, Y, or Z song as a sample in your song. Uh, and it still counts as an original song. It's, I guess that's the same concept as photo bashing. Okay, so now we have here, we want to remove some stuff here. We also, it looks like we made some stray marks. Here, we want to get rid of where this touches the border. Good. Great. I'm going to do... We had some idea about this. I forgot what it was. It was, oh, no, no, we did it already. We, we put this twice so that it's not a, a lone. We essentially don't want any designs to only appear once. We want them to all repeat throughout the picture. And this was the only time that occurred, but we did it again here. So now we will make a new layer. We'll work on this bottom left portion. Uh, and we can also add the figures What's the best way to do this? There's no... Uh, maybe we can dictate it based on how large these are? Okay, so... Because we want there to be some kind of internal logic to the sizing of this stuff. We don't want it to just all be like rescaled and whatever. Like That can look good, but I think there's sort of a purity to having since this is literally called the geometric style of Greek art, we do want to have some kind of like logical consistency to the geometry. Yeah, so we're going to do this. And we'll sort of cut down, I guess, on the size of this a little bit in both instances, I assume. Let's make sure that this lives. Yeah, that's still straight. It's a little crooked, so we're gonna fix that later. 
this we're going to get out of here. And this is going to get messy real quick because of the way that we're essentially reorganizing this entire thing. But we'll do our best. So now we have a plane for this to live on. All we gotta do is extend it. We'll put that on its own layer. Good. Whoa. We can just do this. We'll flip it 180. And duplicate this again. and use this as a guide to tell us where we want to put these lines. This line does not hold up to scrutiny <laughs> when it is flipped. All right, let's flip it back. to do is uh, differentiate them so they don't look like they're duplicated. Oh, I see. That's not my thing. That's the under part. Let's just get rid of this for a second so we can actually see what we're doing. Okay, now this uh, will take away the sections here. Good, now we can really get down to business. I think we're gonna make this a little bit thinner in this area.
it's really hard to ignore our guide layer at this point because we're just drawing something totally different than what's on the guides. Like we're not following it, but that's the way it goes. Okay, so this should be a little bit more centered. Good. This is the only design we don't already have a blueprint for. And this we probably can't use here, so we'll probably have to redo this smaller. Or it might end up that we use this only once or something. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But it's looking pretty good so far. We also might remove the triangles because I don't like that they occur vertically, almost totally vertical to each other. It's better if they're only in these corners. So we might take this away, which would then let us, oh, we would have the same problem. We would have the same problem with this one then. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. We might want to do a little bit of reorganizing. But good, ladies and gents, we have um, a huge portion of the picture finished. All we gotta get is this bottom left side and, and the human figures that are entering the Trojan horse and the uh, border on the bottom. Thanks for joining. The channel's called The Voice of Nick. If you wanna see more, don't forget to hit the follow button. If you wanna find out more info about the um, uh, book that I'm publishing, which all these illustrations are for, you can type exclamation mark Troy in the chat. Look out for this book on Amazon. Look out for the audiobook version on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books coming soon. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, and thanks for watching.